Hi, this is Ed Butowski with ChapwoodFinance.com, and I'm honored to have Praveen Ganta here from Hidden Levers. And, uh, you know, oftentimes in our business, we're always trying to figure out where the risks are in uh, a portfolio. I mean, financial advisors want to know, and as well as clients want to know, and we have to, as advisors, find a way to interpret, understand, and dissect a portfolio and communicate that to our clients. Well, Praveen and his uh, company do a magnificent job at that, and I wanted to take a little time, Praveen, and introduce you and have you talk a little bit about Hidden Levers, because uh, I really believe most advisors and most portfolios need something like this. So, first of all, thank you for joining us. Uh, thanks for having me, Ed. So, Praveen, let's talk about the risks of portfolio management, because most people just look and say, well, is my portfolio going to go down? And normally, with the high correlations, meaning that stocks and bonds and other investments are all tending to move very similarly, and not so much bonds, but most long-only equities move up and down together. When you look at a portfolio and with the work that you guys do, tell me what you see as risks and what your company does. Uh, well, what we do at uh, Hidden Lever said is, is fundamentally speaking, we build portfolio stress testing tools. Uh, so we help uh, our clients, our advisors, we help them stress test their client portfolios, answer questions like, well, what would happen to a portfolio if uh, the government shuts down? Or if we, uh, you know, the debt ceiling, you know, crisis comes back and, and the government defaults on its debt. So some of these scenarios, these, these events that could happen that are in the news that are uh, they're on people's minds, uh, what if we fall back into recession? You know, it's not as though the economy is growing that well right now and that could happen. So these are the sorts of big risks that could take a, a chunk out of an investor's portfolio. Uh, of course, like we saw in the financial crisis, but, it, you know, even back, just looking back two years, we had... Uh, Two uh, almost twenty percent dips in two thousand eleven. Quite a roller coaster that year. Right. So, so these are the types of fears that investors have. Uh, the trouble with the way that that Wall Street and that a lot of firms have been doing risk analysis is, unfortunately, a lot of those models failed. When we go back to the look at the financial crisis, and uh, and failed to account for, as you said, that correlation where a lot of investments tend to move together, and uh, you'll think you're diversified across a basket of say stocks or mutual funds. And then when a real crisis erupts, they all move in the same direction. Yeah. So what we do at Hidden Levers is we measure that correlation, that, that relationship between how do the investments in, in a portfolio, in your portfolio, move uh, relative to different indicators in the economy. That's what we call the levers. So things like, think about oil prices, think about uh, inflation, uh, economic growth, uh, the stock market itself. Th these are all sort of those big picture levers that move your portfolio. Uh, so by measuring those relationships, then we can try to answer those what-if questions and, and say, well... Uh, Dr. Marston, I'm sorry to interrupt there, but uh, Dr. Marston was my professor at Wharton, <clears throat> one of my professors, and one of the things he said is the key to asset allocation is understanding and looking for low correlated assets. And, uh, you know, can you explain correlation and how everything has become much higher in terms of correlation? And then also share with us, because right now we all believe interest rates are going to rise. And it's pretty universal, which is also you know questionable, right? Because we that might not occur, especially if we see Europe implode uh, soon. But if interest rates do rise, what happens to a, an equity portfolio historically during those times? Uh, well, those, those are some good questions. Ed. you know, first, uh, you know, with regard to correlation, you know, really what's going on there is this is just the idea that uh, two things might move together. So that could be. Uh, Think about, you know, when we look at and we analyze markets with our system, the idea that uh, as home prices rise, home building stocks might rise with them. So those two called correlated together, right, positively correlated. As the S&P or the stock market rises, most stocks will tend to rise as well just because that's a very high correlation. Now what's happened since the financial crisis, and this is what you were referring to, is that those correlations have gotten even higher. Now it's to the point where uh, different asset classes that aren't historically thought of as related, like take for example... Uh, the S&P, so the stock market, and oil prices, uh, and even something like the euro, the currency, all of those are very highly correlated today and have, have been for the last couple of years so that you'll see the stock market rally and you'll see gas prices go up together because oil prices rose with the stock market and you'll also see the currency in Europe rally. And that's not something that uh, portfolio managers have been accustomed to seeing. Uh, it makes life more difficult because you have to account for that when you're trying to diversify. Right. Now, and, you, oh, oh, go ahead, please. No, go ahead, Ed. So let's also talk about interest rates rising. 
Bond prices <laughs> almost universally, anyone that's interest rate sensitive, not the high yield bonds, which are more right. you know, focused on the balance sheet, but interest rate sensitive bonds. What would you suggest based on the work that you've done? And I'm not asking for a portfolio recommendation, but really looking at the work that you do at Hidden Levers. What, mm -hmm. what do you see as a good asset class to include in a portfolio during rising interest rates? Right. You know, that's a, that's a great question. And actually, I, we, think that, we tend to think that the problem is actually a little more complicated than that when we model it out. It's, uh, there are different reasons interest rates could rise. Uh, so in, in our system, for instance, we have two different scenarios, one called rising interest rates driven by growth. That's essentially a positive thing where economic growth is rising so the Fed feels like, okay, they can finally start to ease off and, and raise interest rates or let them rise again. Uh, and then there's the, the sort of scenario that mo most folks are afraid of and, and that we'd like to prepare for, which is rising interest rates driven by inflation. Mm -hmm. And this is the story where it's actually inflation that starts to get away from the Federal Reserve. And, and because they're keeping uh, interest rates low and because they're pumping money into the economy via their various QE programs, now that starts to uh, cause inflation to go up. Uh, when that happens, then interest rates eventually have to rise to counter that, just like happened in the early 80s when in order to get control of that inflation, the Fed raised interest rates again and again and again, and, and finally it started to work. Uh, at any rate, you asked the question, what, what are some asset classes? So when we look at those two stories, they're a little different. If it's driven by growth, then the equities market is a great place to be because, of course, of course growth is, is positive correlated with equities. If it's uh, rising interest rates driven by inflation, well, there you're going to really be looking at the underlying driver, which is what investments are positively correlated with inflation. Uh, you know, whether that's uh, agricultural commodities related investments, right. that's uh, in, in some cases with inflation, that could mean that if the value of the dollar is dropping, there are certain foreign investments that would tend to be inversely correlated because, you know, as Americans, we tend to not think about our currency too much because we live in the land of the reserve currency. Right. Uh, most of the world thinks in terms of multiple currencies, and when you have money outside the U.S. in, in certain investments, well, as the value of the dollar drops, relatively speaking, that asset is doing the same, or it's going up, in fact. So uh, that's a good so point. It, I, 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 is, I'm sorry, this is the danger with Skype. I sorry for talking over you. Go ahead. Uh, well, those are some general ideas with regard to the fixed income market. I actually think that. Uh, Again, if we see an economic recovery, we would see interest rates rise, but you're also, as you say, you're going to see high-yield bonds tend to do well because they have that equity correlation. They, they kind of act a little bit like stocks because as the economy gets better, they're less likely to default and therefore their prices will rise a little bit. So they can outperform versus a really high-quality bond. Uh, the other area that we think is interesting is munis. And the reason we think the munis are still somewhat interesting is that... Uh, they got beat up so bad with the fears of a muni bond crisis that hasn't necessarily you know, fully played out. And, and so there's still some opportunity to take advantage of that where muni bond pricing will improve potentially if the economy improves. Now, of course, if we talk about interest rates driven by inflation, unfortunately, that's going to just hit bonds more across the board because you're really looking at you're looking at the 70s then where you have that kind of stagflation going on. Now, growth is going down. Inflation is going up. That's going to crush you on the bond side with the high rising interest rates. It's also for the high yield bonds, you're going to see defaults. So that's a more dangerous situation where you're going to need to look into that, the other spaces that I, that I spoke about. Yeah, and I, I, I'm very much uh, a believer. We would have a, a good little debate. You, you might win, uh, but I might win as well about uh, muni bonds right now in this environment. But the whole key to hidden levers and the work that you do mm -hmm. is really about getting a little deeper than just the headlines. And we live in a country where people are so flooded with data that they're starving for knowledge. And what I really like about what you guys do is that you drill down deeper. And, uh, and I appreciate that. And uh, I just wanted to highlight you and, um, and let people know that you are out there. Uh, at the same time, you know, dive into some of your knowledge. So uh, thank you very much. I guess your, your website is hiddenlevers.com. Is that, is that safe to say? Uh, that's right. And what I'd say just in closing is that uh, portfolio stress testing is key for investors today. And you know, take a look at what we're doing. But you know, if there's other companies out there you can work with, Take a look at what they're doing, but it's key for both investors and advisors to be doing this and to be prepared. Yeah, I, I agree. I always like to say that my portfolios, uh, they might not always be this way, but I like to say you want to build portfolios that are ready for just about any economic activity. Um, so, uh, so thank you very, very much uh, for joining us and uh, look forward to visiting with you again soon. Great. Thanks, Ed.